water bucket, a cutting wire, needle tool, two round sponges, a wooden knife, and a wooden rib, and some soft, well wedged clay. So we can use that that kind. You can use the buffalo wallow with frog. It's just that. It's got so much grog in it that it's going to really exfoliate your hands. Um, mm -hmm. I can use some exfoliation. Use a, well, you don't want to use a lot of lotion. <laughs> yeah. In fact, my hands have really been getting dry from all the demonstrating I've been doing on the wheel. So these I know are, I wedged up last time, so I know they're, they're well wedged. And then you want to start with a ball about the size of a large grapefruit or small cantaloupe. Okay, if it's too small, your hands will get in your way. If it's too big, it might be too much for you to deal with all at once. Okay, get, get in a position. We're gonna wanna bring down a stool that doesn't move. This rolling stool is gonna be irritating. And then get your water, embrace your arms. so that you can squeeze the clay together to try to get it centered. You want to keep your arms anchored whenever possible. Now on my left side right now, I've got my arm clamped down and wedged up against my body so that when I lean forward, I can push the clay. Then you can bring the other hand and squeeze it together. But by keeping the one hand anchored, it gives you more stability. And if your body is anchored in place, then the clay has to conform to you. If you're not anchored and your clay is off-centered, then the clay is just going to move you instead of you moving the clay. Okay. So you want to be anchored down. You can use your body for leverage. Every time the clay starts to stick, you need more lubrication, more water. You can tell that your clay is centered once it's be stationary even though the wheel is still turning. And then when you release the pressure, you want to release gradually because if you release the pressure abruptly, that can knock you off center as well. To open the form, you want to have your arms braced, rest your thumbs in the middle and gently push down to find the center and keep pushing down. Again, if the clay sticks, you need more water. Try not to go all the way down to the wheel head or you won't have a bottom in your form. Then you need to stop to check the thickness of the bottom. Stick your needle in until it touches the wheel head, put your finger to the bottom of the form and measure. That's an inch, so that's more. I need to, more than I need. I need to go down further. While, while I've stopped it, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this excess clay. But this is the only time I want you to touch the wheel, the clay when the wheel's not turning is to measure the thickness of the bottom. You've got to use your centrifugal force. Okay, I'll keep pushing down to get my bottom thinner. And then I overlap my hands and pull towards me to open that form a little bit. I'll put the needle in again. And that's uh, just barely over half an inch. That's okay. I'll go down a tiny bit more. And then I'll continue to open the form. So to open the form, again, I'm bracing. One hand is overlapping the other. Put it straight down to the bottom. And with my arms braced, I'm pulling straight towards me. And then hold it for a second and gradually release the pressure. Now I want to compress the bottom with my sponge. I'll rest it in there gently push down. So I'm compressing the bottom and picking up the excess water. 
sometimes when we pull to open the form, we knock it off center. In that case, you'll need to collar it to recenter it. So to collar, you grasp and gently squeeze and hold it. Now I'll start doing the first pull. So what I'm going to do is grasp the clay between my thumb and middle finger and, and slowly travel upward, allowing several revolutions to pass as you travel upward. This is the point where I need to be able to slow down and control my speed. So I'm going to have to adjust this foot pedal. You can try doing one cylinder with it like this, but going to be difficult if you can't slow it down. Now I'll do my second pull. And that time I was squeezing the clay between my two hands and traveling up with that way. I've knocked it off the center a little bit, so I'm going to try to collar it back a little. tendency to flare the clay out at the top so you want to counteract that by keeping it collared in because if you get it flared out too much at the top it'll be hard to get it back under control and I'm going to go ahead and and continue coloring this in until I have a closed up form. So I can make a sculptural piece with a closed up form, probably a wall piece. I'm so happy that it, the wheel slowed down. Maybe you'll be all right to throw on this. It was just temporarily jammed. When you collar it in, it makes the walls thicker again, so I could do another little pull, even though the rest of my walls are pretty thin. And uh, when I, I've already picked up the water out of the bottom, but you want to be sure that you don't leave any water standing in the bottom of your form. That'll make your clay weak and cause it to crack. Just continue calling this in. A good potter said you should be able to make a pot in three pulls. When I first heard that, I thought that sounded impossible. But the point is, is that the more pulls you make, the more saturated your clay is going to get, the more stretched out it's going to get, the more exhausted it's going to get. So it's a good objective to try to get your form, your cylinder done in three pulls. Five will probably be more like it for you starting out. 
but if you're getting up to 10 and 15 pulls, you're really oversaturating your clay and you need to stop. A lot of times once you get going, it's hard to, it's hard to stop. I have a tendency to overwork pieces. But I'll try to keep an eye on it. And I just took off the excess water and erased the finger marks. You don't have to do that. You can leave your finger marks visible. I can uh, apply a little more pressure to the exterior of this because it's now that it's closed form, it's got air trapped inside of it. One last undercut. I'll soften that bottom edge. And then I'm ready to cut it off the wheel head. If you have an open form, you're going to need it to slide. So you can put a little extra water on the wheel head, make your wire taut, but be careful not to cut your fingers with the wire. Place it right down flat on the wheel head and pull towards you quickly. And then if you can, stop your wheel. Be careful not to accelerate or your piece can go flying off. And then you should be able to slide it off and onto a workboard. You can take off the back, back part of your splash pan. Any of your scraps keep to the side. You don't want to try to re-throw your scraps on the same day. They need to sit and be wedged up the next time. That's all. Try to make 10 cylinders ten a day. So you have 30. If you can't make 10 cylinders a day on the wheel, then hand build some of them so that you end up with 30 forms that you can assemble together to create more interesting forms. No sketches. It's all spontaneous.